As you can see, the weather is definitely not the best for astrophotography. But as you know, taking the pictures is only half the fun. The other half is editing. So since we are stuck with this weather anyway, let me show you how I like to blend HA and RGB data so you can get an image like this one. But before we jump into it, I gotta give credit where credit is due. The process I'm about to show you is not something that I invented. I'm simply just a messenger here. The real mastermind behind all of this is Bill Blanchan, and you can find him on YouTube and another Astro channel. I highly recommend checking out his channel, especially if you are more of a deep sky oriented person, because Bill is quite a magician when it comes to pics inside, pixel mat and scripts. I will add the links to his channel and tutorial in the description of this video. I will also add a Google Drive link with the files I'll be using in case if you would like to download those and follow along, plus the script we're gonna be using. I added the script to my Google Drive because I'm a bit worried that some would simply open up Bill's tutorial, download the script and close the video. This would then send the wrong information to the YouTube algorithm and it could even possibly tank his video. And this is the exact opposite of what I want to achieve here. So if you are interested, download those files and script and uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's begin. Here we have our RGB image and here is H-alpha image. I already aligned HA uh, to my RGB with Origa Registar and uh, I do cover this topic in a tutorial which is also available on my YouTube. Now let me give you just a quick backstory about the data. So I captured uh, the images in Trenta Valley and uh, for the RGB image I stacked, let's take a look, uh, 10 images and I used back and Z6, which is Astro modified and uh, Wiltrox 16 mm lens. I shot it uh, wide open at f1.8 and uh, 2 minutes per panel. I always shoot this lens wide open because the uh, quality is uh, just acceptable, at least uh, for my standards. And for H-alpha I captured 4 images with the same settings, but uh, I usually shoot uh, HA between ISO 4000 and 6400. I don't know what happened in this case, I probably just forgot. Now let's move to Pics Insight. And we're gonna simply just drag and drop those two images. So here is HA and uh, RGB. Now we have to prepare those uh, two files and the first thing is to remove the stars because we're gonna blend starless RGB and starless HA. So for this I use star exterminator. Looks like my PC will need a second because I'm also recording. Now because we're gonna blend the stars back in Photoshop we're gonna check generate star image and just drag and drop the triangle on RGB image. All right, so here is our star image. I'm just gonna rename this image to stars. And uh, if you want to rename any uh, image in PixInsight, you just have to double click on this tab. So stars and I'll minimize it because we won't need it in the Pix Insight anymore. Uh, next is uh, HA image and uh, this one is fairly noisy so I'm gonna use uh, noise exterminator first and then I'm gonna use star exterminator. We can close noise exterminator and we do not need the stars from our HA image, so I'm, I'm gonna unselect this and uh, run Star Exterminator. And uh, here is our starless HA image. 
I'll now close uh, the star exterminator. Now, because I used uh, Nikon Z6, it's basically one shot color camera. So it's still RGNB image, even though I used uh, astronomic 12 nanometers clipping filter. And because of this, we have to split the channels to RGNB. And we do this by selecting the image and we go up here and we use this process where it says split RGB channels. So just click on it and here we have blue channel. We do not need this one. Same goes for green. And here is the red channel, which contains all this beautiful nebulosity. We do not need uh, our HA image anymore, so we can uh, just close it. Now let's uh, just drag and drop the script to PixInsight. And here we have a few options to choose from. And we're gonna go with HA to RGB Advanced V1. So just double click on it. And here is the script in pixel math. Now in order for this script to, or, uh, to work correctly, we have to prepare our files. Basically, we have to follow a few certain rules. And uh, the first rule is the number of images. We're gonna need uh, one RGB image and two HA images. Um, this script uh, was originally intended to be used for deep sky work. And those guys usually have perfect stars when it comes to HA and uh, in our case that's not the same if I can show you here let me bring the exposure up a bit and uh, as you can see stars are just uh, terrible so uh, what I do is I clone the starless HA image and uh, the script uh, just uh, works uh, regardless the uh, second rule is the naming of the files. So uh, we have some instructions here. And uh, as you can see, our HA image must be named HA. Starless HA must be named Starless HA and Starless RGB must be named Starless RGB. You also have to pay attention to capital letters and uh, underscores and so on. So the naming must be identical as you can see here. So let's do this now. First, I will rename the RGB image to Starless RGB. Next is HA. So we're gonna name this one to rename this one to HA. And uh, we will simply just uh, clone this image. Uh, to do this, you just simply move the mouse cursor on uh, this tab. You click, drag and drop and uh, this creates a clone. Now we just have to rename this one to Starless HA. Just like so. I can minimize those two HA images and I'll move them out of the way. <clears throat> now this script has two modes, as you can see here. First one is nebula mode, and the second one is galaxy mode. Sometimes you can get a worse result with one mode and great one with the other, or sometimes you can get almost identical results, but uh, with minor differences. And in this case, I like to save both images, and then I just mask in the best parts from both images in Photoshop. And I'm gonna show this uh, later. So, let's generate our first HA RGB image and um, to do this we simply just drag and drop this triangle and we drop it on the RGB image. And here is our first HA RGB image and uh, as you can see it is darker but uh, the data looks quite beautiful. Let me just move it exactly on top of RGB image and if I press control and page down I can uh, jump between those two images. Now I'll generate the next HA RGB image and uh, for this I will change the mode 
to one. So we're gonna go with the galaxy mode. And here is the second HA RGB image. Um, as you can see, we have just a little bit of red color bleeding, but uh, that's not a problem because we're gonna fix all of this in Photoshop. And as I said, sometimes one mode works better than the other. And from experience, I can say that the Nebulae mode usually gives better results Although here I'm quite happy with the Galaxy mode, actually. And uh, I will show you how to use both of those images in Photoshop. So let's move there now. And uh, before we do, of course, uh, we have to save all four images. And uh, this means starless RGB image, both HA RGB images and uh, stars. Okay, so now we are in Photoshop and here we have our first HA RGB, second stars and uh, starless RGB. I'll first start with uh, this one because it's just a little bit easier to work with, with. and uh, I'll unlock the layer and I'm gonna move it on top of starless RGB, just like so. And uh, let me just rename the layers. So this one is going to be HA. This one is going to be RGB. And now we need stars on top. Like so. And uh, if you want to reveal what's underneath the stars and still keep the stars, we have to change the blending mode to screen. Now let me hide this layer and uh, now it's time to blend HA and RGB layers so we get rid of this ugly red uh, color bleeding. And I do this by adding a mask to the HA layer and uh, we're gonna simply paint away unwanted areas. Now for this we're gonna use brush tool which is right over here but you can simply just press B on your keyboard. Um, because the mask is white, this means uh, the brush tool has to be set to black. And then we just simply paint away unwanted areas. I'll bring the opacity up to 100. And uh, in this case, hardness of the brush tool is okay if it's set to zero. And we're just painting away what we don't want. You can also press Alt on your keyboard and click on the layer mask and this will show you which areas are already painted and which are not. This is just a easier way to get everything right. And uh, to show the image again, just press down Alt and click on the layer mask again like so. Now the data looks quite okay, maybe the red color is just a little bit pale. To increase the intensity, what I like to do is to go under the adjustments tab and I select selective color layer. And this will then give us a few options. Here I usually play with reds in the drop down menu and magentas. So Let's stick with reds now and uh, the two sliders I like to move are cyan and magenta. So let's bring cyan down and you can already see how nicely it boosted the red color. But we also introduced a bit of that red color bleeding in the image again. So we're gonna just select the layer mask and we're gonna paint away those unwanted uh, regions like so. And you can repeat this process as many times as you like. For example, I will add another selective color layer. And again, I will just bring down the cyan. Um, one way of doing things is also to invert the layer mask by selecting it and uh, pressing Ctrl I on the keyboard. 
Now because the mask is black, I have to change the brush color to white, like so, and we can just paint in those red areas. And if we enable our stars, now the image looks much more pleasing. I will now use the second HA layer, so I'll just hide this and stars. And it's gonna be this one, so I'll simply unlock it and I'll move it on top of starless RGB. This one is fairly dark and the first step I like to do is to bring the exposure up with curves. So if we go under this menu here and we select curves, we now have curves layer. Because we do not want to affect all the layers, we're gonna clip it to the HA layer. So let me rename this one to HA2. I'll select the curves and I'm gonna just simply clip it. Now let's bring the exposure up a bit, maybe like so. And now I'll simply just repeat the same process. So this means I'll add the layer mask, we'll use the brush tool and it is set to black. So again, I'm gonna just paint away those unwanted regions. And let's press Alt and click on the mask and we can refine the mask. Um, if there is a big difference between those two layers, it's better to bring down the opacity of brush tool a bit and uh, work uh, like this. And uh, here we can also repeat the same step to bring out the red color. So, so we go under the adjustments, selective color and just bring down the cyan a bit. And let's enable the stars. As you saw, blending HA and RGB data can actually be very easy. And at the same time, I would encourage you to keep an open mind. And I'm not talking just about this tutorial, but in general. What I'm trying to say is, your data won't be always the same. Sometimes you will have great conditions, sometimes you won't. The important thing is to have fun and to experiment. Try to run background extraction on your HA data, or just apply a simple curves transformation. As I mentioned, the important thing is to experiment and not just copying the exact numbers down to the decimals you see in the other tutorials. Huge thanks to Bill for his wonderful script and thank you for watching. I sincerely hope this tutorial was helpful. So I think uh, we are done here. I hope to see you soon. Take care, clear skies and uh, bye bye.